I saw Bluetti has done it again with a new, really impressive portable power station. So you've been seeing me using this EB70S from Bluetti for a while now. This is impressive. Uh, it's a great unit for, I think, a lot of people, for most people probably, unless you're a really heavy power user, or it might be overkill for a lot of people who just don't need this much power. So the EB70S is a 716 watt hour battery, uh, 1000 watt pure sine inverter with a uh, surge that's above that. Um, really good features though and I've been really really impressed with this thing and I ran a MacBook Pro, not this one, this is a light one, I ran a MacBook Pro for two full days on this unit. Well now Blue Eddy has a brand new unit, now, this is the EB3A and this thing is impressive, it's smaller and I put the other one out here so you can see the size difference, it's also very light, this thing weighs in at just over 10 pounds. Um, I can pick this one up with my non-dominant hand, but it's it's quite a bit heavier. Um, so the EB3A is a very much lighter, which will be of interest to some people who just need a lighter unit. Um, and this also has some other interesting features. Also, you have to pardon the notes here, because I want to make sure I get all the details right for you and don't lie to you about the d details. All right, so it's a 268 watt hour LiFePo4 battery pack. So it still sticks with the LiFePo4. Um, and, and but it is 268 watt hour instead of the 716 over here. So that's that, you know, um, uh, less than half the size, not quite a third of the size. Uh, 600 watt pure sine wave inverter, which is really great. Uh, that's gonna cover most situations, I believe. Um, uh, this there, has 1200 watt surge, but most part, if you're charging up your laptop or, or a camera battery, something you don't have a, a USB for, that's gonna cover you. One of the great things about the EB3A is this is the AC charging cord. And what you'll notice, if you are familiar with power stations like the EB70S, that has a big brick that goes in the middle of this cord between your AC wall outlet and your uh, um, portable power station, then it plugs in there. This actually is different. It does not have a power brick, external power brick, in the cord. You plug it in here instead, and you don't have a brick so that, that's a nice thing for it keeps it smaller and more compact and a lot of people don't like the bricks so you get rid of that with the EB3A okay as far as the other features you have two DC 5521 ports here for a 12 volt two USB-A ports here for uh, for you know charging of course and one USB-C port that's a PD port with 100 watt output which is great because that means I can charge a MacBook on it. Uh, even my MacBook Pros will charge on this, which is really fantastic. Better than using the inverter. You don't have the wasted energy. Obviously, a 12 volt cigarette lighter outlet and uh, two AC output ports down here. Uh, it does also have the LED lamp that, you know, oh, there it is. So you can't really see it in the sun, probably, but. There it is, has an LED lamp as well. Uh, as far as the size goes, like I said, a weight 10.14 pounds or 4.6 kilograms if you prefer metric. Uh, as far as the size is 10 inches by 7.2 by 7.09 inches. So quite a bit smaller than the uh, EB70S. I love the screen on this, the enhanced LCD screen. Um, there's a lot more information on here than, than even on the EB70S, which is great. Right now, as you see, so there's more information there, which I appreciate. Uh, it's got some few different power modes you can set on this. It has a standard power mode, then it has an eco mode where it turns off um, if the AC or DC power is a very low draw for uh, four hours or so by default. The power lifting mode, which increases the power output. You cannot run an air conditioner or something on this. Uh, you can run a curling iron or uh, uh, was, uh, electric heater was the other example they used. You're not going to run them for long on a, a, uh, a 268 watt hour battery, but you can run them for a short period of time. So uh, yeah, you can put that into the power lifting mode to do that. It also has UPS bypass, which means if you're plugged into AC charging using your cord, so you're at a campground, you're on shore power for whatever reason, you're charging with AC, you can put it in the UPS bypass mode, and if you're using outlets here, it will jump and it goes straight from your AC you're plugged into on shore power through here and it's not otherwise uh, 
you know, you're taking it from AC, you're converting it to DC to charge your battery, then you're running through the inverter and converting it back to AC to come out again. So it bypasses all that. And if you're plugged into shore power and you have your AC turned on, you plug something and it goes straight through like a pass-through kind of AC power. So that's really convenient. You may wonder why you need that. I've had times when I was in a minivan or a car, I had a campground and an extension cord with just one end on it to plug in. So, you know, that would be where this is plugged in. So it just saves you having to split stuff and, and uh, like that. So I think it's convenient. All right, as far as charging, uh, when you're using AC, again, that's this cord here that plugs in down here. Um, you can charge in standard or in turbo mode, which will charge faster, or you charge in silent mode, which charges a bit slower, but it needs less cooling going on so you shouldn't hear the fan you can charge on uh, solar panels photovoltaic solar panels and it'll take a 200 watt panel and it'll take you an 8.5 amp max so again for a little tiny unit like this to be able to take 200 watts of solar is fantastic again it's 268 watt hour battery so you know you can really charge this thing up fast with uh, with solar that way and then 12 volt dc is a little charge slower charging the eb3a here does support passive charging so you're charging up on AC, you're charging up on uh, solar, you can actually use the device while you're charging it. So that's really important. And I think that's going to help make this unit valuable to a lot of people. Reason is, you recharge this on solar, if you're at a campground, it doesn't really matter, you're plugged in. But if you're recharging on solar all day long, you can continue to use this while you've got 200 watts of solar power coming in, which is going to cover you for pretty much anything you want to do. Um, other than running an air conditioner or something heavy like that. So you got your 268 watt hour battery then you still can use in the evening. So as long as you're a light power user or you're reasonably careful with, I, I mean, I could get by with this on a 268 watt hour battery in the evenings because um, I've got the battery on my laptop. I'll just make sure the laptop's charged up while the sun's up. And then I've got the laptop battery anyways. So I wouldn't even have to be having to plug it in here. Um, you know, I, I use LED lights and everything. So yeah, you could, you could definitely, I think a lot of people could get by comfortably using a unit like this and just relying on the power from in the evening. So with the passive charging, I think it opens up some possibilities. One of the fascinating things about this thing, and I said Blue Eddie hit it out of the park, I wasn't kidding. This thing will charge from zero to 80% in 20 minutes. That is mind blowing. So I think that makes this really valuable and a good option for a lot of people. Because you can charge it so fast, I think this could actually work for a lot of people because who just who this is enough power for for overnight. Because you're gonna have it charged back in no time as soon as the sun comes up to put your solar panel out and connect it. Examples of what you can charge with this, and these are examples, your exact mileage may vary, but iPhone 13, you should be able to recharge 12 to 17 times. A MacBook, like this one here, five to six times drone five to six times a camera 10 to 15 times and a fridge will run a 90 watt fridge will run for two to two and a half hours that would be the one thing i would say with a smaller unit like this i would not try and power a refrigerator on for very long you could do it short term but i would personally you might you might make up fine doing it personally with 268 watt hours i would not want to be running a fridge overnight especially in the summer when it comes on a lot um th that's i just wouldn't be comfortable that I don't want the point is I don't want to run this thing dead okay? and I don't want to run these things down and deplete the battery and damage the unit uh, trying to run a fridge is going to keep running until this is all the way discharged so you might be okay with it that if I was planning on running a fridge on a power station I'd probably look for something a little bigger maybe like the EB70S that may just be me worrying too much as well uh, <laughs> uh, that uh I don't know that for sure, but that, that's just the math on it tells me it might be a little bit short. If I were to run a fridge on it, I would definitely be trying to get it cold during the day when I have solar and then backing off the temperature setting or even turning it off at night so I didn't have to worry about it running down my power station. All right, one more cool thing about this, it actually has a app that you can use on your smartphone, Android and iPhone. Uh, so use the app, use the Bluetooth connection from your phone to connect to the power station which is really cool so there's some things you can do with that that are pretty neat one is you can check the state of charge that's you can look at your ac and dc output as well as your input power input when you're charging it up uh, shows you where your your state of charge and output and input uh, charging modes you can set in here between standard silent and turbo you can set those all with the app uh, 
the power lifting option to have uh, boosted pow out power for like a curling iron or electric heater with the examples Blue Eddy uses. Uh, you can turn on the power lifting in the app. Uh, the eco settings are adjustable in the app. Right now we have eco turned on here, but you can turn it on and off. You can also set the time before the eco kicks in between one hour up to four hours. And you can turn the LED light on and off, including the strobe low and high, which I guess is fun. I've never used the LED light on either one of these, but you know, be able to turn it on with the app, I guess maybe you'll be more useful. And you can also do firmware upgrades from within the app, which is pretty cool. All right, one additional feature I forgot to mention, like the EB70S, it has 15 watt wireless charging output on the top. But once your DC power is turned on, you can just set your phone on here if it supports wireless charging, and it'll charge wirelessly, which, again, neat feature. So that's the Blue Eddy EB3A brand new unit. Thanks to Blue Eddy for sending to me check out. I like this thing. It's a nice compliment to this one. I've showed it to some other people who thought, hey, the weight of this thing and the compact size of it makes it attractive. Depends on what your needs are, obviously, for power and stuff, but if you're a light user or if you're going to be able to charge every day with solar, this might be something to look at. I don't have a price for you yet. This unit is not even for sale yet. Uh, it's not on Blue Eddy's website yet. You can't find it. But May 25th, when this video is going to air, Wednesday, uh, a few days now after I record this, it will be on the website. You'll be able to get more information about it. It actually goes for sale on June 14th is what my understanding is. And so I'm sure by the time it's on the website, it'll have pricing information. So I'll put a note in the description, a friend comment with that information, along with a link to where you can check out this new Blue Eddy EB3A on the BlueEddyPower.com website. Um, I just don't have all that information for you yet. So what do you think? I want to know what your thoughts are on this with what I've been able to share with you so far. Do you think the new EB3A from Blue Eddy would work for your power needs? Uh, whether you're traveling or or just something you take to the park or the, uh, for a picnic or something, or whether you have at home as a backup power source in case of an outage or anything, lots of cases where this would work. I'm thinking of it primarily as a nomad and a full-time traveler, how I'm going to use it. Uh, but, you know, it, it's, it's a nice compliment to the bigger one. And honestly, it wouldn't be bad to have two power stations one a little bigger one a little smaller so um you could do that too but for a lot of people i do think this could work if you have like moderate to light power needs be able to charge it up all day so let me know in the comments what you think about this unit love to hear from you uh, i'm pretty impressed with it i really think this is a good model blue eddie really did a great job with this and i'm looking forward to using it some more on some camping adventures this summer thanks for joining this video we will catch you in the next one